just awesome. And you may be seated. It is so incredible. And one of the things I told Dutch, I said, you know, we prepared the way during the prayer movement, but you can't deal with this that we're discussing today by just the prayer movement. You have to have government versus government. And that's why there has to be apostolic centers that we can gather in and really allow the revelation to come forth. And I think God is, is doing that and raising that up. And it's just amazing what we are experiencing right now. I want Chad to show that one more time because <clears throat> Tim was so detailed on it, I knew nothing about what Tim had experienced, and Dutch and I were at the Citadel, and that was the first time they had ever had an outside group worship there, and the 13 colonies hosted us, and uh, they allowed us to be there, and of course, that's the oldest uh, war institute that we have in America, and uh, Dutch was speaking, and I just was zoomed up in the midst of them and looked down and saw their positioning. And they were positioned for this Passover to come. See, every Passover is important in this era. Pay, the pay era is a Passover era. And I came down... I. I did, I knew immediately there was 51. I knew, and they all had their sword in their sheath, and yet when they're assigned, they will determine whether they take it out or not from state to state to state, and then they all converge on Washington, D.C., and uh, let's thank God for the team that is called to Washington, D.C., led many times by Dutch Sheets. So let's thank God for them going there. Now, one thing I want you to understand prophetically is God is not going to do things. This, it, it, it's like the word said, he won't do something like this without confirming it with Two or, more uh, two or more witnesses, he said. And for him to show Tim and I the exact same thing, it's, uh, we're, we're headed into a different world. And it's, uh, it's real exciting for us. And, you know, go ahead, Chad, and, and I, wanna, I wanna share some things with you because see, this whole era, is an era of war. What, what Tim is saying to us today, we have to understand. I remember when I first wrote a chapter on Thrones of Iniquity. That was back in 2000, I think. No one even understood what that was about. And now God has brought it into time. You know, I really never worried about whether anybody ever understood anything I said. You know, it didn't bother me because they didn't understand what Isaiah said, you know. And, but somebody has to say it and see it, and then all of a sudden you know apostolically when you hear someone like this that is, uh, has such authority in this area that now is the time. That's what you want to know. There's a difference between the prophetic seeing of a situation and the determining and executing it and commissioning it like we're being experiencing today. That's apostolic. So we have entered into this apostolic time of war. And that's why you see that happening in Israel on Yom Kippur, from starting at Yom, Yom Kippur, the skirmishes, but coming into full-blown war yesterday in Israel, and 
Uh, of course, we've, we've been talking with Israel back and forth since 3 a.m. this morning, and Daniel just got off the phone with people in Israel. And it's important that we understand we're living in a wonderful time of visitation. See, the pay season is about visitation. Look at somebody and say, get excited, we're being visited. It just wouldn't what we thought. Uh, and so with that, it, it, and really, it's how will you rule in your harvest field? That's what Tim is introducing this morning. How are we going to rule? Because remember when the Lord caught me up in 2008 and showed me America, he showed me the remnant first. Every state had a triumphant reserve remnant that was forming. Every state. Every, it's, and there were only 21 in covenant in 2008. Two were hanging in the balance, Florida and California. And Florida has shifted. Let's thank God for that. I mean, we, we've watched it. And, and every state has a triumphant reserve. And then he showed me these castle centers that were down, embedded down into the ground. And I'm going to tell you why that's so important. Because when you're studying the tabernacle of David and the restoration of that tabernacle, see the tabernacle of David, when it's in reality, it goes five layers down into the earth below us because it, it has such a power about it when it is fully restored, that the whole ground is restored and the layers of the earth are restored. See, the earth holds iniquity. And uh, when we do iniquitous things in the earth, the land itself holds that iniquity until we worship and release those iniquities. And so uh, gatherings like this are, it's causing earthquakes. I mean, it's causing things to shake up because we're carrying a glory here. Look at, we got four times what Gideon had here. I mean, listen, we don't need to worry about what is going to happen. There's a bunch of us out there and there's more with them. I mean, we okay? Tell somebody next to you, you okay? You gonna make it? <laughs> now, let's look at harvest for a moment because here's the, here's the danger I was saying last night. We might not recognize our harvest season. See, that's why the Lord's had, is having to retrain us so much is because in a harvest uh, season, and especially, and why it is so important, I'll just go with what Tim's saying. See, the heavens are, are shifting. The heavens are moving. I saw this scythe go across the heavens. Well, if that's going to happen, then that scythe, that harvesting instrument, will come down across the earth. And we've got to recognize, harvest recognizes the season when it's time to gather crops. And harvest requires harvesters. Poke somebody in the side next to you. That's us. We're doing all sorts of wild things that I'm getting flack over uh, at our place. You know, we have teams that go into all the strip clubs. And they, we are now taking care of 200 children of strippers. I mean, you're, you're, and, and they're getting saved. 18 got saved last month. And I, and I had one, per, and it's just, you know, you got to have some people who are, they're just out there and they, they're just not afraid to go in. And I, I had someone lambast me and say, why are you sending these holy women into strip clubs? And I said, to get those holy women that are in there out of there.
I mean, I, I, I just feel like, I, I, poor Tim this morning, he said, you know, nobody has dreams about me like they all have about Dutch. <laughs> I, I, I said, well, they have them about me, but they always aren't, they can go either way with me, I'm telling you. <laughs> End time harvest is always marked with wars and rumors of war. It's got judgment in it, but it's filled with restoration. And you've got to sh separate wheat and chaff. That's what makes this so important this year that we just shifted into this morning. It's because this is the era of the wind blowing, of the voice of, and with voice comes wind, and What's going to start today is a, a separation. It started last week. And uh, then it requires, uh, you know, putting a sickle to a grain, heads of grain, that is not an easy job. And yet, why we're being remade, and we're talking so much about the ecclesia, uh, the Lord had me several years ago start calling us a storehouse. Because God is having to remake storehouses, and that is happening as the ecclesia rises up. And because we're going to be bringing all sorts of people in, and we didn't do a good job of it in the 68 through 74. We do not want to repeat that in America. What happened in the Jesus movement, they couldn't come in. And we, we really lost some harvest. Now, so this, yesterday, I, I began, go ahead, Chad. I began to ponder, uh, we've got to know his time and walk in his timing. And so I thought it was am amazing how Dutch shared that dream about the Liberty Bell. Uh, that, Greg, did you, that was you and, and Dutch in that revelation and uh, because, see, the Liberty Bell in America, it, that was before the Declaration of Independence. And it, it uh, so I went back and reviewed it because I have studied it. And it's got, it, it cracked three times in history. And, uh, but the Liberty Bell was formed from Leviticus 25, that's what caused us to do a liberty bell. Uh, and so all you've got to do is read that whole chapter. That, the liberty bell is our shofar for America. See, and so because of that, we've got some cracks in the voice. And this dream is so significant right now for us, especially yesterday at the end of Feast of Tabernacles, because that's what Leviticus is about. How, and we've got to understand that, that God is calling us back to repair the voice of this land. And I mean, it's a war over that, a huge war over it. It's not about just the bell. It is about what that bell represents. And America was given a voice to decree to the world freedom in the spirit of the Lord. And God will restore that voice again. And so, see... Doug says something else last night, and I just tried to think through it all during the night because I was getting some phone calls. And go ahead. See, at every gate, there's a timing. And a lot of us don't understand time because it's secular and it's circular. And what began in 2019 goes all the way to 2028. This era that began, this won't even be fulfilled until 2028. And what we're doing each year is adding to and attaching revelation from year to year to year. 
That's why it becomes so important. And last year being the year of the war for divine recovery and opening new supply routes, well, now all of a sudden, the year before that is when the ecclesia started coming into a better understanding for this age. Everyone say this age. See, that's why you want to understand those demons have been here, but they've got a lot of different tools to work with in this age. And you've got to understand that phrase, this age. And so now it's moving from that divine recovery of the house that is being built for the future into and up to the gate. Go ahead and let's look. See, all of a sudden now, God has been doing such a work in us. He's got us up to this door of promise for 5784 in Hebrew. And so we're at this door of promise, but there's always a war at the door. At every threshold, the word threshold is also, also means uh, pythos, divination. At every threshold, there is a battle between revelation and divination. Say those two words, revelation and divination. So you're going to have to understand this becomes so supernatural. Go ahead, Chad. So see, at every gate, beginning from the time when Yeshua prophesied that it, in uh, Caesarea Philippi, and that's where the God of Pan ruled. See, the Pan ruled there. It was even, this was a revelation that came about the ecclesia with the ruling spirit of Pan in Syria, one of the, uh, Syria, one of the darkest places in the whole world. And at every gate, you are contending for revelation. And on every gate, there is a name established. And really what Tim is saying, we, had no, we don't plan how we're going to speak. It just all, the Spirit of God flows it. You're going to have to determine what name goes on the gate. That's why that song was so important last night with all those names of God that Rachel wrote. Because it's the name that's warring. Who will rule that entryway? Who has authority at that gate? I could teach all through the word about that. And you're going to contend to reflect the identity of the name at the gate. So see, what I found so incredible is what I saw, which I'll go back to in a moment, over the Ohio Valley. And you're going to have to relate the word that the Lord speaks or illuminates to you of his character at the gate. Somebody, you're going to have to tell somebody, your name's coming down. Because see, the word of God isn't just wisdom. Revelation, Dutch teaches on this. I, 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 don't, I don't teach like Dutch can teach, but there's a big difference between revelation and wisdom. Revelation uncovers. And when Lucifer, that seraphim, was cast down, he, the word of God says, what he did was he uses wealth and he uses sound to cover over. That's called occult. Revelation is the only way that you can uncover what occult is holding covered. And so we're contending with our emotions at the gate. So that's why God's having to deal with all of us. We can't be some emotional basket case when we walk up and face off whatever's ruling the gate. You're going to have to be okay. Look at somebody and say, just get a grip. We're going to make it. (laughs) 
And see, here's what the Word of God does. And this is what Revelation does. It, it, it's really bringing us an enlightenment that says, what does God demand of us and how will we work with him to see it accomplished? See, I, I don't know that this was what I would have chosen for my life. But when revelation came, I had to make a choice to do what the Lord wants me to do. Uh, I mean, I still like to do some other things, too. <laughs> Tell somebody, you know, you, you got to be happy and live a little life out there. But, but when God tells me to do something, I have to make a choice. Will I accomplish that mission no matter what? And right now, he is requiring us here in what is called America to accomplish a mission over this next year and a half to dethrone these thrones of iniquity. Now, Chad, keep moving. Because, see, this is really what the gate looks like when you put the whole era that we shifted into. The pay era stands at the gate. And pay means face to face. You're gonna come face to face with the Lord first, then you're gonna face off who he sends you to face off. All right? And the only way you can do that because pay is linked with voice. That's why that Liberty Bell was so important last night. And what speech is going to do is create your future. How you're speaking right now is creating how you will step into your expected end. That's what future means. And speech creates boundaries. See, rules are like boundaries, but boundaries and rules are two different things. You are speaking a new set of rules into boundaries. And this is why America is having to really look and say, the war is really over that court. What will be the rules that create our boundaries in the future? And how will we act and how will the words that we release into our atmosphere cause the world to respond? See, what you say causes your atmosphere to react. And this angelic host that are flooding in right now, they all have messages with them. And we're going to have, we're all, they've got to work with people. Tell somebody, you know, God will use what he's got. You made it through. You made it into this next phase. But you're going to have to save what he tells you to say. And because all the Lord is looking at, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He's got a covenant plan. And just because we act bad in one generation doesn't mean God changes his mind and says, we will just now end that and let that go on and be bad the rest of the time. No, he's got a covenant plan for America. And that's why that bell needs to be tuned again. because it sounds covenant across this land. And God is saying that. You, you're going to you're gonna have to really let us have that, Dutch. I mean, you're going to have to make sure we get this. God is retuning his covenant voice across America. And that's causing us all to shift. Every one of us are shifting because the voice of the prophets have to shift. Prophets can see and say the future. And then the watchman, which is a type of prophet, watches after the word to announce the two things, the enemy's movement and the timing of God to rally. 
And God is calling us both into this type of dimension. And he's saying, I'm pulling my people together. I'm rallying them. And so that's why all these angels are coming down here. And his role of establishing the kingdom on earth. He, he, he's coming to say, I've got people that I'm going to use when Goliaths are taunting. Because he, Goliath was using divination to fill the atmosphere and causing Israel to come into agreement with it. And David just came in and said, why, why y'all listen to this? And that's the way we're going to be in days ahead. And yet we've got to be very sure. Some wonderful man came up last night and said uh, uh, I, that uh, Lord Sabaoth is also known as commander-in-chief. Now, if we will say right now, we want who is seated as commander-in-chief in this nation to have Lord Sabaoth backing him, and we're not going to settle for anybody else. Now, I don't know who that is, but we want Lord Sabaoth in that office. Now, so this is what God said last night. Ohio Valley will be where the intersecting winds. These angelic hosts, they, they, they carry wind with them. You will have a sign in this valley where the winds converge. It'll be, it'll be in the news and say it was very unusual what happened. The winds converge together. And I'm not saying it'll be a tornado. I don't know what it will be. But you're going to know at that point, the angels have all come and war is on. Because it's going to form a new gate for heaven to rush down into America. And it's going to be like what is said in Malachi chapter 4 that uh, about the healing in his wings and all of a sudden it's going to be like a calf let out of a new gate. And it's going to cause sons and daughters to reunite. It's going to cause all sorts of things to happen. And let me tell you, it's already on the way being formed. And so that brings us now to this need for us to understand the kingdom we're in and that we're unlocking heavens. We're dethroning evil that has been enthroned. And when you think about kingdom, be sure we understand kingdom is so, the kingdom is within you. And, and we build the ecclesia. The government has to be built properly, but the kingdom's within us. The kingdom's within us. And the kingdom is the whole of God's redeeming activity that's going on. And it's ruled along with the kingdom of heaven. And there's this divine alignment happening now, and it is so supernatural, and you're caught right in the middle of it because the kingdom is within you. And as heaven's interacting, as kingdoms are clashing, you are right in the center of the action. Yeah, look at somebody and say, I, did you ever think you'd be right in the middle of everything like this? And when we gather like this, which is a kingdom meeting, all of a sudden, as we're assembled, we have great legislating power. And we have the power of the king behind us that says, you say it 
and I'll move it. You're going to see key gatherings this year. We're going, because when God caught me up, he showed me all the iniquities and every state, now every state didn't have apostolic centers. Every state, there were some forming. But every state had thrones of iniquity that were competing with the atmosphere of that state. And I'm telling you, what you're hearing today, that is of utmost importance because the throne wars are on. And you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night and just have one sentence and you're gonna say it out loud and the whole atmosphere's gonna change. You don't have to be a mouth like us. You just have to say it. Say it and that angel's gonna grab it and take it to where it needs to go. And then it's going to start multiplying, boomeranging, and before long there's so much action that you've created in the atmosphere. I'm telling you, we're about to stir everything up. It's just awesome. And you are a kingdom representative. And you're going to cause things to move and shake. And, and see, this is what I've never understood about the body. They get into this warfare. Warfare means the grace. To, uh, one thing about warfare, it means we have grace to fight. There's a supernatural grace that comes to us when, when we're in a warfare season. We are capable of fighting and our king cannot be defeated. And so, a lot of antichrist forces. Now let me leave you with this because it is really important we get this. And I, you know, I, I see that forming, intersecting winds. Here, I mean, it's just angelic activity. Now, I believe what God is watching this year is the house. How is the house forming? How's, what's happening right now with houses? And see, it's it, in Ezekiel 43, what Ezekiel saw was not only the angelic activity, but he saw the house. And I've read that book so many times, and I, it wasn't until this, past, this year that I saw a phrase in it I had never quickened to me. And it said, in Ezekiel 43, when it's talking about the glory, it says, the law of the house is going to be applied. And what God says he's going to do is start watching how we're moving in his glory realm together. How we're governing from his glory realm. And it becomes important for us to understand that where you, and Chad, let's show that last uh, slide that I just put in. Where you have seated in the past and invested in the past, this year the Lord is longing to see it multiply. There is a supernatural multiplication anointing that has been stitched into the gate you go through. Now that's the way I want you to think. See, that's what Psalms 23 is about. You've been seeding in, seeding in. Some of you might, it might have been 70 years. You've been seeding in and seeding in. And now what God has done in this era in history is stitch that into. Your prayers have been seeding in. And he stitched it into the gate that you're going through. 
And that gate has so much multiplication already working on your behalf. You do not want to back down from it. You don't want to back off from it. You want to take the name that's backing you and say, your name's coming off. And if you'll go to many gates, you're going to see names on the other side of those gates that, are, that have been, they're, they're thrones of iniquity. And this is what the Lord's requiring for us. Where is this remnant? Look around at us. We didn't have one trouble hearing and coming together here. Where are the gatherings? You knew where to come. See, these are not the same as us going to church. As we've defined church. But we are the ecclesia that's gathering. Where is the government of the church in each territory? Where is it nationally? See, I, I run, I know God put me with Dutch because of his national call from the kingdom governmentally. I asked the Lord one time, Dutch and, Dutch and my wife have the same birthday. They have the same personality. I said, why? I, I called Pam this morning and I said, honey, I was just praying for you all during the night because she's really been struggling some physically. I said, I, I don't want anything to happen to you. I, I'm afraid I might be bad if something happened to you. And she said, you've been bad as long as I've known you. <laughs> she said, just keep doing what God's telling you to do and we'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, that's how simple it is. But I asked the Lord, I said, why? And he said, because you need them. Now, that's true. There are certain gifts that yours won't work right if you don't hook it up right. That's what alignment is talking about. I know I would not have gone up in heaven if I hadn't been sitting under what he was speaking. Now, hear what I'm saying. There's reasons we're here today. God's hooking us up right. That's why I'm sharing this. God is making sure we are aligned right because he is the God of the host and he's the Lord of the armies of earth just as well. And you're, one of the things the Lord will deal with this this year is how is the, my spirit having liberty to move how has the Spirit moved in the past in your area? How was the Spirit quenched? And how will you allow my Spirit to be loosed in a whole new way? And that's how you're going to detect what, Kim, what Tim just told us. You're going to see how a throne of iniquity is stopping the next move of the Spirit of God. And then God's going to say, this is how we are going to take this thing down. I'm going to send that angel in for you. Then you're going to do what that angel says. And don't run him off. This is what Exodus 23 says. You're going to do what he says, and all of a sudden, my spirit's going to get loosed in your whole territory. Now, let's stand up for a moment. Father, this is a prototype moment, what you have been doing. I consider myself so privileged 
that he would allow me to be in this gathering to witness and to hear what he is doing today and how important this region is and how this region will be a new gate for the entire nation. Father, I loose this anointing that you have stirred here today, and I say it will continue to stir. It will continue to move on us. Father, it will activate our gifts in new ways. Father, we trust you. We thank you for the ecclesia that's raising up for a time such as this. Now put your hand on somebody and tell them your gift will multiply.